Welcome to Hack Informer HD, I'm Just the Renny and this is week 3 of our weekly roundup. Sony is no longer taking your crap, at least when it comes to firmware 3.60. It all began with the inability to activate a 3.60 Vita, but now even accessing PSN is no longer possible. This means no multiplayer or even the ability to sign into the service. What I find funny is that you're able to activate a PS Vita on any firmware but 3.60, including those lower than it. Sony is targeting 3.60 specifically as if it were this black sheep of the Vita firmwares. Anyways, we've had PSN access for quite a while, so as much as it sucks to finally lose it, we can't say we haven't had it for a large amount of time. Every Vita can now be a test kit Vita. As long as you're on 3.60, of course. Due to scene members and their research, it is not possible to replicate most, if not all, of a test kit Vita onto a retail system. The application is named Test Kit Installer Deluxe, and not only does it offer test kit functionality, but also has an activation time of 32,341 days, which is probably more than enough time for me to break my system. Again, Anyways, it's great to see the Vita isn't quite dead, especially in the eyes of the modding community. NTR Boot has finally been released. Now, if you don't know what NTR Boot is, it is pretty much a exploit that allows you to install Boot 9 strap using a custom game card and a magnet. Not only that, but it also allows us to unbrick any brick 3DSs as long as it wasn't bricked by Gateway. If you heard me correctly, you're probably confused as to why you would need a magnet to install Boot 9 strap. This process checks if the start, select, and X buttons are held down while the shell is closed. The problem is that you can't really hold down these buttons when the shell is closed, can you? This is where the magnet comes into play. I won't go into detail as I'd rather you read the article, link in the description, but what I will say is that this is compatible with every 3DS and 2DS. Yes, even the new 2DS. Plus, it is very easy to do without any sort of hard modding, which that by itself is just amazing. Once again, for any of you wanting to know all the details and what cards you'll need, the link is in the description below. The Phoenix 9.3.5 jailbreak is now out courtesy of some very generous developers. Firmware 9.3.5 was the final iteration of iOS 9 that came to Apple's handheld devices. To clarify, if you happen to have a 64-bit Apple device that is on 9.3.5, this jailbreak is not for you, as Phoenix only works on 32-bit devices currently. Luckily, a 32-bit device is not hard to find at all. Phoenix is also semi-untethered, meaning once you power off your device, you will need to re-jailbreak it. If you wish to give this a shot, we have a tutorial up on our website. Now just remember that we at Hack Informer are not responsible for anything that goes wrong. But then again, the risk of breaking is minimal. Alright guys, that is everything for this week's weekly roundup. If you think I missed anything or simply want to state your opinion, leave a comment down below. I'll be seeing you guys later. Make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Just the Rennie, signing out.